Hello guys, welcome to our channel. In this video we are discussing horrific things that were normal to Chinese concubines. Enjoy the video. Before China adopted the communist ideology back in 1949, it was an imperial monarchy for centuries and throughout imperial Chinese history, concubinage was still one of the accepted norms and concubines still play a large part in pre-modern Chinese culture. Concubines are, in a nutshell, mistresses, and in ancient China, polygamy was considered normal, especially for the rich. While not all Chinese people can have concubines, it was the norm for any successful man to at least have one concubine in their household. However, as with many other things in ancient China, there is an unbreakable hierarchy. The status of the concubines will never be higher than any official wives. In the royal family, concubines are only recognized as sexual partners of the king and are expected to bear children, but will never ascend the throne as an empress as long as the empress still lives. Chinese Concubine Training The candidates will then be examined thoroughly, and they will be dismissed if the results are not up to the imperial standards. They won't only be evaluated physically, but their mannerisms, body language, and voice tone will also be considered. Candidates that pass this evaluation stage will then receive lessons and tests for many months, ranging from improving their intellectual prowess, how to regulate temperament, and even morality and philosophy training. This training period is very rigorous, and many will fail to pass. The last hurdle is a series of lessons and tests about many advanced topics from mathematics, Chinese literature, art, and the candidates will then be ranked according to their performance before being offered to the king. Life of a Chinese Concubine The day-to-day -day life of a Chinese concubine might be very difficult to comprehend in this modern age where male-female emancipation, although still imperfect, has advanced so much compared to the times of ancient China. The word for concubine itself in Chinese is chia, which can be literally translated into female slave. This shows the philosophy behind the concubinage. As an imperial concubine, your life is simply no longer your own and is considered the same as a slave. As an imperial or royal concubine, your life belongs only to the emperor and a concubine can't ever step out from the forbidden city or forbidden palace where the ancient emperors of China lived without any official consent from the emperor. Concubine's main role is to fulfill the emperor's desire, especially in bed, and they are forbidden to have sexual relationships with anyone else. The violation of such rule is punishable by death. In day-to-day -day routines, they perform later-like works like sewing clothing and embroidery. Also, a lower-ranked concubine must also attend higher-ranked concubine's needs. Some might need to directly serve and tend to the Empress's needs. However, it's worth noting that throughout history, there are several occurrences of concubines who ended up controlling the ruling Emperor from behind the screen, gaining power for themselves. Concubines are allowed to develop their later-like hobbies like playing musical instruments like guqin and pipa, read literature, and even painting and calligraphy. However, their main duty remains to serve the emperor in bed, and so before the emperor visits the imperial harem, all the concubines will be examined by the imperial doctor. Those that are deemed healthy will be groomed and hope the emperor will choose them for that night. There were often hundreds of concubines inside the imperial palace, so it was considered lucky to be chosen by the emperor, especially if they can bear children and be the mother of a prince. Many of them will have no experience meeting the emperor at all throughout their lifetimes, and so we can say they wasted their life hoping they were chosen by the emperor. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and comment.